Hi, this is Kendrick Johnson. We're going to talk about vaginal bleeding during pregnancy. So this happens fairly commonly, but it's uh, pretty distressing to a pregnant mother, uh, of course, because of the implications of a possible abortion, which we'll talk about in a second. So among the most common causes of bleeding in the first trimester include implantation bleeding, which you usually see around the time of the missed period, which is uh, th theorized to be associated with the implantation of the embryo. Miscarriage, again, is, the, is one of the big things that we worry about here, and we break it into to four or, or five different categories. One would be a threatened abortion or miscarriage, and the threatened abortion would be characterized by vaginal bleeding with a closed cervical os and uh, the products of conception still in the uterus. Inevitable abortion would be vaginal bleeding with an open cervical os uh, with products of conception still in the uterus. Incomplete uh, abortion is characterized by uh, uh, expulsion of some of the products of conception and a complete of course would be all the products of conception. There's also a missed abortion where we have a non-viable fetus and uh, and either a closed or open cervical os can be seen with that. So genital tract lesions of many different kinds can also cause bleeding. Vaginitis, uh, polyps, warts, all those can be associated with uh, vaginal bleeding as well as as trauma you have a a abnormally friable cervix uh, due to something called ectropion where the endocervix protrudes outside of the cervical os and that's a common uh, normal finding in pregnancy that makes vaginal bleeding a little bit more common so after sexual intercourse and uh um, other other trauma to the cervix, you can get uh, some vaginal bleeding. Ectopic pregnancy is the major concern for the safety of the mother, and uh, that's generally going to be associated with uh, some some pain. And we'll talk about diagnosis of that in a second. During the second and third trimester, the major causes are placental abruption and placenta previa. Uh, vasoprevia, abnormal placentation, and ruptured uterus are also causes, but they are much less common than the first two. So we're going to focus the rest of the time on uh, placental abruption and placenta previa. So placenta previa is characterized by a placenta that is uh, attached over the cervical os or near the cervical os. We break it into three different categories, one being complete placenta previa, which is what you see in the picture here, where the placenta covers the cervical os. Marginal placenta previa would be if the placenta uh, just comes to the margins of the cervical os. And then low-lying placenta previa is just if the placenta is low, uh, but not necessarily in contact with the cervix. Um, placental abruption is when you have a separation of the placenta from the uterine wall and uh, any time before birth. So a placental abruption you can see in this picture here uh, where the placenta is, is uh, breaking away from the wall. Uh, ultrasound is actually not a very reliable way to diagnose this though. We'll talk about that in a second. So the presentation is a little bit different between these two. The history of a placenta previa often includes uh, multiparous women and prior C-sections, whereas placental abruption is more commonly associated with hypertension and substance abuse, specifically cocaine and tobacco. I've also seen tobacco associated with placenta previa. Uh, placenta previa is painless, bright red blood that often stops spontaneously and doesn't cause distress to the fetus, whereas placental abruption is often more painful. Uh, the, the bleeding is darker and it doesn't stop by itself and it does cause distress to the fetus. 
So this slide is more of a general slide, again, uh, going back to all the different causes of, of bleeding during pregnancy. You're always, of course, going to do a physical exam, and one of the first questions to ask is, uh, have we lost so much blood that we are no longer he hemodynamically stable? So, of course, we'll take blood pressure. We'll check for skin turgor and capillary refill, and we'll uh, make sure that the, the mother is stable. The location of the pain, especially in the first trimester, can help us uh, to distinguish between a possible uh, miscarriage or a possible ectopic pregnancy. If the pain is more lateralized than we think of ectopic pregnancy, whereas a centralized pain would be more associated with miscarriage. Doppler helps us to uh, know the viability of the fetus which helps us to differentiate between a possible missed abortion and a threatened abortion, for example. Um, the speculum exam is, is very important, especially if we're looking for uh, vaginal causes or cervical causes of bleeding. But we don't want to do this um, after 20 weeks until we've done an ultrasound. Uh, this is a because we don't want to uh, cause any trauma to a possible placenta previa. So once we've done an ultrasound and ruled out placenta previa, then we can go ahead and do the speculum exam and digital cervical exam. HCG helps us to, uh, to look at uh, possible molar pregnancies or uh, ectopic pregnancies. Um, we do want to save the tissue to uh, to see if we have uh, expelled products of conception. So we treat placenta previa and placental abruption uh, fairly simil similarly. We want to stabilize the patients. We want to hospitalize, in some cases, the uh, placental abruptions. Um, we give tocolytics to help prevent prematurity, betamethasone to prepare the lungs, and placenta previa is more often uh, delivered with C-section. Thanks to Sigrid and Nevit for the pictures that we used in this uh, presentation. If you want to help out, please leave a comment, or you can get involved more by going to worldmedicalschool.org backslash volunteer.